Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, this webinar is going to be about uh, the role of a software architect. And it's a new format, so I'm just using directly YouTube without um, basically scheduling it first through Google Hangouts. So let's see how it's going to work and how many of you are going to join. So the purpose of this webinar is to discuss the role of a software architect in software projects. I wrote an article about that about a year ago, maybe a year and a half, and where I tried on the blog, where I tried to explain how I see this role and why I think it's so important to define this role and, and stick to the definition and emphasize the, uh, the responsibilities and of this role. I believe, the, so why the webinar again, and why do we really need to, to, to focus on this problem? And whether do we have the problem in general? What, what's the problem there? I believe there is a problem, and a big one, because uh, in, most, in most teams, in most software groups, which I, um, which I had um, some experience to work in, uh, I, see, I keep seeing the same situation, the same, the same, <laughs> the same problem. So people basically, programmers and managers and scrum masters and you name that, uh, they basically do not define the role of a software architect explicitly. They, in general, usually they have um, some more or less experienced programmers and then there are some less experienced programmers and uh, basically they just, there's no explicit definition of who is the software architect and who is just a programmer. It's just a group of people where, like, say, 10 people, they're all writing code, programming in PHP or Java or whatever, and there, one of them is more, um, more experienced because this person stays in the, in the group for, for months or for years, and some people just came recently. Um, and, and, then, and then they call this guy an architect, um, a software architect. And that's it. And they and they and they pay more money to this person because because it's a big title. It's a software architect, while everybody else are like software developers or senior developers. And this is the per this is a software architect. But this is not enough. I think this is this is really wrong that we are not explicitly defining this role. And that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to to tell you that we really need to define this role explicitly. And 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 why why is that so important? There are a number of reasons which I'm going to give today, and I'll I'll explain them. I'll show you probably by example what I've what I see in this, uh, what I've seen in this in these groups and these companies, and uh, and how I am suggesting to solve that. So, but but I, I I think I defined the problem already. So the problem is that there is no clear definition of the role, and the group is just working, just going forward, just making some decisions, and when when the decision is when the technical decision has to be made. Uh, we just basically talk to each other, we, we talk in front of a whiteboard, we draw some diagrams, we discuss, and then we give our opinions, and then we basically make the decision uh, together as a group. In most cases it works, but in some cases it doesn't. And, and, then, and then the questions, and then we have a question, who is the architect, who, is, who makes the decision? And in most cases, in all cases, it's basically a democratic decision, so we just need to you know, we, we are just together um, making that decision as a, as a group. I'm not saying that that programmers usually vote for decisions. They just raise hands and saying, I'm, I'm in, I'm out. But they're trying to convince each other. So if I'm against something, then, uh, and then there are other three programmers or three designers, developers, they will try to convince me that the solution they are they like is basically the solution we all have to go for. And if I'm convinced, then, then we will continue and, and, and implement that solution. But if I'm not convinced, they will keep convincing me until, I, I, until, I'm, con until I'm convinced. So what, what's wrong with that approach? And I believe this is a really wrong approach. This is, this is terrible. And it kills many projects. It kills many teams and it kills many projects. And it, it's, a, it's a cause, it's a, it's a root cause of why people so often uh, so often leave companies. They just quit companies and quit teams because they can't work together with with some with some people or some inside some group. So I think this is one of the main reasons. So why is wrong? The, the the first the first thing is that basically this is how we promote chaos. So if there is no one if there is no central place of decision making, if there is no 
person or if there's no mechanism for making decisions, then basically it's chaos. It's chaos, which is which looks like democracy, which looks like a teamwork, but in reality it's chaos. So when there is when when we do not define who exactly is going to make this, who, is, who exactly makes the final decision, then basically we're saying to everybody that we don't care about your, you know, we don't care about uh, about discipline, we don't care about uh, organization, we don't care about um, your, you know, your your roles in this group. We just want you to stay calm and don't bite each other and just and just keep working. So this is really not the attitude to you know to professional programmers. So immature programmers will kind of like that because um, because there is no strict rules, because there are no discipline, and it's really easy to hide your immaturity or your lack of knowledge or your lack of skills uh, behind this group work. So we're all doing something, we're all making some decisions, but in the end, it's, diff it's difficult to say who actually made the decision. So who is responsible for it? So who, who, is, who has the final say? We just don't know that. And, and this is really good for, for people who don't have enough skills to be responsible for their own decisions. So it's good for immature programmers. When programmers are more professional, they want to work in the environment where there is some discipline, there is some process, there is some definition of of what's wrong what's right and the lack of the architect means that we don't have uh we don't have a mechanism it's not about the person it's more about the mechanism of resolving questions so when i have a question and my and my colleague programmer sitting next to me on the same desk he has the question of let's say uh do we need to to use this particular class or another particular or this library or another library so we have a lie we need to choose which library to use and and I have an opinion, and he has an opinion. So we don't know how this how this conflict, which is a constructive conflict, how it's going to be resolved. So we, we we don't. It's not defined. So we don't have an architect. We don't have a a, a central person who will finally who will have uh, a final say. Who will say this is the uh, this is your opinion. This is my this is his opinion. This is your opinion. I hear you both. And now this is my final say. So I'm saying, okay, the, the, the opinion number one is right. The opinion number two is wrong. And that's it. If we don't have this, this mechanism of making decisions, this is chaos. It's not teamwork. It's, first of all, it's chaos. It's just lack of, of it's, it's, let's say I can give like a, uh, a metaphor uh, to say that, uh, let's say on the road, there are cars moving left and right. And let's say we don't have rules. And we say we just move left and right and, and we cross streets and we stop and we let people, I mean, let people go. And then we, like, we, just, we just move on the streets the way we want and we just respect each other, but there are no rules. What kind of, what kind of traffic is going to be? That's going to be chaos. In some situations where drivers will be less professional, not so fast, they will move really slow and, and then it somehow will work for, I mean, until the first accident. But it's not going to be a comfortable environment for, for drivers who want to drive faster, who want to get somewhere quicker. They want rules. And this is what actually annoys me when I get from uh, Europe to America. In America, it's kind of it's close to chaos on the roads. And in Europe, it's more to discipline. So the European traffic, the European driving rules are more disciplined. They have way, way more signs on the roads. And, and in general, the traffic is way more. It, it, the people move faster and you can get you know faster to the point in america the the less rules and more like and more and more chaos <laughs> less signs and more chaos so lack of software architect first of all is chaos which is not going to be appreciated by professional programmers mostly because they they don't understand again how their their problems will, will be resolved that's that's one aspect this is chaos the second one is that uh, when we don't know, when we don't have the person who resolves our conflicts, and we will have conflicts, if we are professional programmers, if we are professionals, then we always have our opinions. We always have something to say. We always, I mean, think about something, and it's not, we, we care. And when I'm developing something, I do care about how my software works and how this piece of code is implemented. 
it is important for me. I'm not just working for money and I'm not just typing something on the keyboard and then just getting, getting my salary and just walking home and forgetting about that. I do care about this piece of software. And, and because of that, I, I want it to be my way. So I want this, this piece of code be implemented the way I understand quality. But then there is another programmer sitting next to me on, on, on the same office or maybe the same project. And then th this guy also has an opinion because he's also a professional programmer. So when two professional programmers work together, there will be conflicts. And this is good because this is how we create something new, something uh, productive. This is how we uh, guarantee higher quality because we clash people, because we, uh, we create these constructive conflicts. We put people in front of each other and say, uh, give your opinion, and then you give your opinion. And in the end, they, 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 uh, they, they give us their, their opinions, and, uh, and, we, um, and we resolve these conflicts, these constructive conflicts, and produce solutions, which sometimes are compromises. So we, I mean, we, we find something in between, but in most cases, we either go for left or go for right, which is way better approach than finding something in between. So, so we need to define if, if there, the mechanism of resolving this conflicts is not defined. If there is no, no, there is no architect staying on top of this, of these two people or three people, then, then all of these three people will understand that the most vocal and the loud who who who's, who speaks louder and who uh who is the most aggressive person in this group of three will eventually win so and this creates a lot of tension and a lot of um frustration for good programmers so if i'm a good programmer and i i know that my solution is good and i know that i have reasons for that and i know that i can explain these reasons but I want to be able to explain that to somebody, to, to one person, or maybe to a group of person, but I want these this reasons to be heard by a professional of my level or even above my level. While in the group, usually, people are on different levels. And when a senior programmer, a serious pro senior or serious programmer, is uh, trying to explain the idea to a group of people, then in most cases, this person is talking to people who are lower than, than his level, in most cases. When we're talking about senior programmer, then, and, and, then, then the, when the group is big, then on average, just statistically, other programmers will be lower if he's just senior guy. It's difficult to find a team where everybody are on the same level, everybody are senior. So this person will have to convince other people that his opinion is is correct that his approach is right and that will be yeah give me a second yeah that's right so um sorry about that so then the problem is that yeah so when this one person is talking to uh is, is the, the one person has to convince uh a, a group of people then it's th the, like i said it's difficult to do when when if let's say i'm a senior programmer and i'm talking to five ten people in front of me then convincing all of them uh it's going to be quite difficult if i don't have enough aggression if i don't have enough uh it's my reasons my the, my point is that just logical reasons will not be enough i need to be quite strong as a person to convince 10 people in front of me especially if personally they don't like me much so let's say and and, and that's a typical situation in the team so it's difficult to find a team where 10 people like each other and they will listen to everybody there will be definitely some politics and there will definitely some some personal uh mismatches in the group so for me as a developer let's say i'm a good developer and i have to convince 10 people and, and sitting in the same room that will be very difficult to do using just logic using just logical just reasoning just talking about java and talking about uh design patterns and talking about just technical things i will need some personal skills to convince these people and this is what um, this is what professional programmers really really hate to you know to to have the, the necessity this necessity of having uh 
personal skills on top of Java skills. So they don't really like to be in the team where uh, being just a good programmer, just a good engineer is not enough. You need to be a so-called team player. But in reality, this team player means actually that you have to be good in, in ass kissing. Forgive me for, for, for using that word, but that's true. So it's not the, the, the team player, uh, to be a good team player, it's mostly the, the, you need to know how to please many people, how to satisfy their needs, how to please this programmer, which is a bad programmer, let's say, and then how to please that one who is an average programmer. So you need to play with people now instead of playing with, this, with the source code and, and basically developing the stuff. So this is what people, I mean, working in a team, they hate if they really need to, uh, to, in order to deliver something, in order to deliver some idea, some technical idea, they have to basically dance around and, and, and play politics and make sure that these 10 people in front of them really going to vote for their, for their solution, really going to vote for, for their uh, decision and their, their approach. And that's really demotivated. This really demotivates uh, good programmers. So they prefer, that's why they prefer to work in small groups. Two, three programmers, that's it. So it's, it's really difficult for a, good for a good developer to work in a group of 15 people when there is no architect in that group. Because they will, like I just explained, they will always have to, to, to show their ideas in front of a big group of people and the, the, pass, the, the likelihood of, uh, of everybody saying, yes, we do like that idea, the likelihood is extremely low. Because of in, I mean, bit, I mean, in per, bit, um, conflicts, person-to-person -person conflicts. So that's what I think. So, um, the, so in the end, because of all of that, the most active person, the most vocal, the most aggressive person will definitely win. In, not the architect, not the right solution is going to win, but the most, uh, the person who has uh, the, the higher voice and, and is ready to, to play politics, that person will win. And the good programmers, they will quit because the situation will demotivate them. This is what's bad in the, in the situation where we don't have an architect, when there is lack of architect. Uh, and probably one more thing is that um, we will create, again, I'm just, it's not one more thing, I'm just continuing this thought. So having these people working in a, in a group without rules, I mean, I'm talking about rules of how we make technical decisions. If we don't have that rules, if we always, you know, sit together and decide together, that is terribly wrong. And if we have that, then we will have a lot of this politics, which I mentioned before. So people will start inevitably, they will start creating that rules. We don't give them the rules. We, I mean, we, the management. So let's say we are, we are managing the group of people, we are managing programmers, we just hired 10 people, we put them together and said, you need to develop something, just go for it. And who is the leader here? Who is the boss? We don't say that. There is no boss, there's a flat organiz organization. So it's a flat organization. There is no clearly, explicitly defined boss in, in between, between you. I mean, technical boss. So go for it. And they will, in the first few days, everything will be fine. But then these rules will start to, they will start inevitably to create these rules. Like in this, you know, uh, it's like, it, it's psychological thing. They will, uh, they will find a leader. They will find people who are against the leader. They will, it will just, it will just automatically be organically will be created. Uh, and this leader will not be the, the most, the most uh, technically uh, skilled person. It's going to be just the, the person who knows how to play with people. And, and these rules will, will be, in reality, they will be quite ugly. So they will be not the rules which we want as people who are, who put these guys together. But these rules will be quite ugly and based mostly on, uh, on, um, based on uh, natural uh, desires and natural uh, needs of human beings. So they will uh, be. They will natural. Be, uh, they will be. Uh, they will help, these rules will help these people to survive. 
Mm, they will know who knows, let's say, they will know that this person knows a lot about this particular library. And they will know that another person knows a lot about uh, how to install the server. And that guy knows how to uh, configure uh, the deployment. So they will know who to talk to. And they will know that if I please the guy who deploys, then he's not going to go against my solution when the deployment doesn't work. So I need to be a friend with the deployment guy, with the DevOps guy, for example, in order to guarantee me that my fix and my feature will be deployed without issues because I'm a friend of the, with this guy. So I will know that making, you know, that arguing with the guy who is deploying is really a bad idea. Because in the end, my features and my solutions and my tickets and, and my implementation will not go through. And I will also know that another, I don't really, I will not really care about, uh, I will not really care about whether this guy is right or wrong. I will just support this guy. And then when, when, when the discussion will start, when we will start to talk about some technical thing which, which needs really my opinion, my honest opinion about something, I will see that this DevOps guy is voting against something. And I will just join him. I will just support him in this in this uh, intention to um, to actually uh, to actually vote against something. So it's going to be uh, I will play against the project, but in favor of some personalities. So I will vote for somebody against somebody. There will be some coalitions, some groups inside inside this group. It's going to be like politics playing. We will have the same as the uh, as the White House has, and, and all these politician parties and everything. People will just play against each other because there are no uh, clearly defined uh, role of a software architect. So why I'm focusing so much on the software architect, and I'll I'll try to I'll try to now now I'm getting to that question because I think I explained uh, what's going to happen if there is no software architect, and uh, I think I can well I can. I don't think I convinced you enough because I still have something to say, but at least I, I hope that I demonstrated you uh, that I, I think that I showed you some examples which you definitely have or had in your practice, in your in your projects. And I have them, I had them more a lot, and I have I still have them. I still see that groups and teams where where there is no we don't know who's making the final decision. And that's why we always need to circulate decisions. We always need to discuss. We always always need to care about who feels what, not who thinks what, not who, uh, uh, um, not which decision is right. But we need to talk, we think about personalities a lot, and that's that what you know turns our team into quite ugly, um, quite ugly environment. So and now I'm getting to how I believe it should be. How this software architect has to, what, what, what's the role? Who is the software architect? So I believe that the software architect is a, first of all, it has to be clearly, explicitly defined role. It has to be one person, uh, like in the army. It has to be a person who is explicitly named and we know exactly who is this person and his role is not transferable until this person is fired or moved to another project. So when the, the software architect is in the project, we know exactly who this person is. And we never discuss, we never say like, you know what, tomorrow somebody else was going to be a software, a mm -hmm. software architect. So we have one software architect. We may have two or three people, but they are like in the army, they have to be like second, third position. So the software architect is, let's say I'm a software architect and, and the, the, a friend of mine is, is a software architect when I'm not in the project. When I, when I quit or I move somewhere or I'm not available, then I transfer this, this role to somebody, to, to this person. But when I'm in the project, I'm explicitly, de I'm, uh, explicitly defined and everybody knows that this is me. That's first. Second and third is that I need to have, as a software architect, I need to have the power to make decisions. And I need to have responsibility to, res to, uh, to, I need to take responsibility for all my decisions, for, for the entire product. So I make all the decisions and I take responsibility of, responsibility of the entire product. So I work as, as if I'm the only developer in the team. So I'm the person, I'm the developer. So I'm responsible for, for this technical solution and I make all the decisions. Obviously, I have programmers under me, technically under me. They may be, I mean, management-wise, they are not under me because I'm not paying them salaries. I may not even know how much of the salaries. So I, I cannot fire them. But all, all technical decisions are made by myself. 
And then I can transfer this uh, possibility to make decisions to programmers. Let's say we have a, a sprint and we have some scope to develop, and then we break it down into some uh, pieces, and then we decide, okay, who's gonna work on what? And then we have 10 programmers, they all take their own pieces, and I transfer their, my, my job as to implement everything. I kind of transfer it to them, and I say, okay, guys, now you do your pieces. But they are, in the end, they're my pieces. So I give you responsibility, I, I transfer my responsibility for the, entire, for the entire solution to you guys, but if something doesn't work, it's still my responsibility. If something fails, if something is not as good as, as, as expected, if the software is, doesn't work, it's always the responsibility of a software architect, always. And then it's it's a job of a software architect, of course, how to, uh, if, if the punishment comes from the management, somehow, or the award comes from the management, then the job of an architect is to actually transfer this punishment down and rewards as well down. So when the software works and everything is great, then first of all, we have to say thank you very much to the architect. So you, you've done a great job. And then if something doesn't work, we're also gonna, first of all, we're gonna punish this guy and say, you've done a bad job. Let's let's see what, what was wrong and why did you do that? And maybe we're gonna, I don't know, we're gonna fire you, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna kill you. I don't know what's gonna happen, <laughs> but but it, we we do something with this person. We never we never uh, uh, we never blame the team for technical mistakes. We blame the architect, and then it's the job of an architect to blame the team, to blame the the the, 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 the programmers. So there are, again, there are two aspects. First of all, the are and that's I'm discussing now the first the, the the one of the aspects, which is responsibility, which means that it's all mine, and it, if it works, it's I'm good. If it doesn't work, I'm bad. That's one aspect, and the second aspect is that the power is also mine. So I am. Uh, yeah, we have. Give me a second. So we have a chat there on the YouTube, and you're able to uh, to post your questions there. I'll be able to answer. I just posted some text there. So keep 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 writing there, and I will try to to see what you what you're thinking about my, me talking about that. Um, so and and the second aspect is that uh, all the power about all the decisions have to be has to be in my hands as well. So when uh, uh, when there are there there is a conflict between two programmers then uh, it's, it's my job, and I have the power to say who is right, who is wrong. And when I say so, my answer is gonna be final. So everybody has to obey what I'm saying. It doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong. They, they, don't, have, they don't have the power to, to, to discuss it that with, with, me, with me. They don't have the, the um, they don't have, they're not allowed to, they don't allow to uh, to doubt my decisions as a software architect. Just it's like it has to be like in the army. So if I say so, we go that way. We may die over there, everyone, every one of us. But if I say so, we just go there. The same for this technical for, for the for the role of us of, of an architect. So the architect, if if it's a bad architect then definitely this person will say, do it my way, do it that way, I'm not gonna listen to your opinions. And in that case, mo most likely the project will, will just be bad. The project will not succeed because, um, because the architect is bad. But if the architect, like, exactly like in the army, if the commander is bad, the commander just gives wrong commands, wrong orders, and we're gonna just, the, the whole troop gonna die. But if the commander is good, then before giving orders, the commander will listen to opinions. The commander will collect opinions from from programmers, from soldiers, and uh, and understand what's the right way to go. And only after that, the commander will actually give some commands. And a good a good architect, the good commander, really is not giving commands too often. The same for the architect. The architect has to be like a final. He, the architect has to touch the team only in specific critical situations. Only when there is really a conflict between two people or three people, only when they cannot find the right solution just by you know discussing it and just resolving it in, in, a, in a simple way. And then the, the architect steps in and says, Jeff, you're wrong, just shut up. And, and uh, Peter, you're right, we go your way. And Jeff, who is wrong, has to respect that, even though he still thinks he's right, he has to respect that and the whole team will continue to work. 
because Jeff will and, and Jeff will respect that if the architect is so strong that that he is able to say shut up here and you're right here. And the more architect does it that way, the more architect shows the power. I mean, uh, in a let's say not the more, but it has to happen not often, but when it happens, it has to happen without any hesitation. So the architect has to be strong in that decisions making. If the architect has you know shows that he has doubts and and he doesn't know what to do then this is a really big problem for the whole team because the team will understand that they're not they're not under control now they're not they're, the, the whole discipline is ruined we don't have a commander we don't have a person who knows about the whole product so the architect should not show any doubt in decision making when the decision is being made but before the decision is made the architect has to ask Everybody, what do you think about that? What's your opinion, Jeffrey? What's your opinion, Peter? What's your opinion, uh, Monica? Just tell me your ideas. Just explain who is right, who is wrong. I want to listen to you. I will listen until I see that there, now the moment for me is to make a decision because you cannot, you guys cannot make it. So now I'm doing that and I'm saying, okay, Monica is right, and you guys just shut up, listen to her, and we keep going. And these people, I'm just getting back, and these people will really appreciate that. Even though their solutions and their ideas were not uh, were not chosen, and even though their their ideas were basically uh, thrown away, they will see that the team has a leader, technical leader, who is capable of making technical decisions and selecting one solution, one decision out of many, and they will understand that tomorrow that could be their solution. So they will understand that that they need to convince one person. If something is, if, if they have something to say, if there is some idea which this Jeffrey or Monica, uh, they want to, uh, they want to implement, and they believe, and this Monica, for example, the person, the developer, the Monica uh, wants to implement to use this library, while the entire team says, Monica, you are wrong, and then Monica says, okay, let's go, guys, to the architect, and I'm gonna give my reasons to one person. I'm gonna sit together with this person, explain what I think, and then you will explain to this person, and then he will make a decision. And he will not listen to the crowd, he will listen to, to technical reasons. Because he's smart, because he's, the, he's on top of us, he's the technical, technical leader for us. And that's why he's gonna to listen to, not the crowd, because he doesn't care about politics, he doesn't care about uh, pleasing anyone, he doesn't care about being nice to anyone, because he's already the architect. His role is not changeable. His role is defined by the management. Nobody's gonna change him tomorrow. So he knows that, he's comfortable. That's why he doesn't care about uh, being nice to anyone. He can say, uh, he can be uh, strict in decision making because his role is explicitly set. That's what I started from. Because his role is not defined by the group. We did not select him, we did not, we, we did not vote for him. It was not a democratic decision. He was designed, he was set for us. He was assigned as an architect by the top management. And that's why we cannot change this guy. And that's why we know that this guy listens to reasoning, not to, not to uh, social factors inside the group. And that's why for everybody, for all, for all of us, the existence of this role will actually make us way more comfortable to work in this group than if we have democratic uh, democracy in there and, and we're just making decisions by uh, by talking to each other and you know being friends and then and then we're good friends we had beer yesterday and that's why we're going to use the library which is wanted by one of us who was at, the, at that beer party but then if there, another programmer was not at the beer party then he has no chance to actually you know to 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 suggest anything because he's not a, not a beer buddy to us anymore i mean he's not he's not one of us so who's going to listen to him? And and then that's it. This if if this person is a professional programmer and he just don't don't doesn't drink beer, then he's out. He's not in the team anymore, and we're losing good resources. But if we have a software architect on top of that, the architect doesn't care about beer or anything. Well, the, like I said, because the architect is is, is assigned by the management. So and I I, I want to give an example which I gave in the in the article uh, in the article on the blog which is about the movie. So when the movie is made, we have a director, we have a person who is making the movie. And this director basically is very close to what the software architect is. So this person is, 
uh, so this, this person, this, this director of a movie, is responsible for the whole movie. If the movie sucks, then the architect, then the director is. We blame the director. We're not going to blame the cameraman and say like, you know what, the, the movie is good in general, but the cameraman made some mistakes, and that's why some parts of the movie are not so good. We're not going to say that. We just blame that. We put the whole blame on the director and say this movie sucks. We're not going to watch it. Who was the director? That guy. Okay. So we know that that guy made a bad movie. And if the movie is good, then we say this this director is like was great, and that's that's that, that's why the movie was great because the director was great. And that's one aspect, responsibility. And another aspect, power on authority. So the director of a movie is able to do whatever he or she can and want on the on the uh, on the on the shooting uh, space when they when they shoot the the movie. So director says what to do. Director can fire, hire, do whatever he wants and change people and replace people and replace actors. He's, he's controlling the entire thing. The same should happen in software projects. So yeah, so th that's, that's what I think. That, that, that's how I see the role of them. Of the, that, that, that I think this is, a, this is a good comparison of the, uh, of the, the movie director and, uh, and the software architect. So that's probably what I wanted to say. Now let's get to, let's get to the questions and uh, and see what you guys have to say. So again, let me summarize maybe in a few words. So the architect, first of all, has to exist explicitly and has to be explicitly assigned by the by the management, which is on top of the team. That's first. And second, the architect has to be able to make to overrule any decision which is made by anyone in the team, and uh, everybody should know that that the final decision is by the architect, no matter what. No matter what, how good or bad this person is, if the architect is bad or doesn't understand anything or doesn't understand how to write a good code, if the architect is there, if he's the architect, then he's making the decisions, like the final decision. And of course, you may say that in that case, we may ruin the project if the architect is bad. And I would say yes. If the architect is bad, the project will suffer and will eventually will be will be in a big. Uh, 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 will be in the will be in trouble. So if the architect is bad, then uh, and then the the project will be in trouble definitely. So how to select the right architect? This is outside of the scope of this discussion. So maybe we'll discuss it later in some other articles or webinars. But what I want to say now is that the architect is there. Then 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 that's it. So he has to be controlling the project. So first of all, it has to be assigned. Second of all, second, he has to have the power to make any decision. And third, he has to be responsible for everything, responsible for results, for responsible for failures, responsible for success. If we can't do that, if we can't find that person, assign this person, and organize the team like I just explained, everything will be great. So that's it. So now let's get, let's get to the questions you guys asked, and I'll try to... I'll try, try to answer. So the first question is, um, yeah. So the question is, what kind of what skills are more important for uh, for the architect? Technical skills or this ability, this personality? I think that the the, the software architect should not care about any in, in, any 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 people skills at all because he is he has the power he doesn't need these skills he doesn't need to be polite he doesn't need to be nice he doesn't need to be uh to be very uh friendly he doesn't need to know how to communicate well he just needs to know he just has to technically be capable of making decisions and be strong enough to to explain to uh, uh to deliver his decisions to the team so that's enough how he, how it's going to be made it doesn't really matter he can just write it on the text and the text documents just email these documents and that's it but i believe that the personal skills like ability to please people and to communicate with them it doesn't matter at all uh one more question um question about the 
how to like somebody says that uh, it sounds like the core problem is uh, sealing developers into specific roles so like giving them specific roles not really I don't think that I don't think the developers I'm actually kind of against that I'm against the de defining explicit roles for everybody I think that the the only role we need in a team is just a software architect I believe I'm even I would even say that testers and programmers should be mixed so I would not I would not recommend to clearly define that this is you are the programmer and you are the tester or you are the UI programmer the front-end programmer and I'm the back-end programmer I would recommend to rotate these roles and, and rotate tasks and make sure that everybody, every one of us, touches something a little bit here, a little bit there. I think this is the right approach. But one role has to be defined explicitly, the software architect. So I'm in favor of a flat team, but on, the, on top of this flat team has to stay the, the software architect. And there is another question, does a software, does an architect compose his team? so that's a good question so who selects the team i think that in general like napoleon said there are no bad soldiers there are only bad commanders so i believe that uh it doesn't really it, it's not so important how good or bad is the. i mean how good or bad are your programmers if you're a good architect then you will deliver something and you will deliver the product you will you will make some success uh, of course, some programmers sometimes deserve some punishment and deserve maybe to be removed from the team, and uh, and, and we need to do some some you know people decisions sometimes. But I would not recommend. I, we are not doing it that way. So we don't allow an architect to choose the people who work with. We just give these programmers to the architect, which are in general not bad programmers, and then the architect has to deal with them and has to resolve um, all the conflicts. So I wouldn't recommend again to to turn an architect into an HR person or uh, a team builder or a team aggregator. I don't think it's right. Again, there are no bad soldiers; there are only bad commanders. The same here: there are no bad programmers; there are only bad architects. So if you're a good architect, you can find a way how to manage even not so good programmers. I, I think so. Uh, okay, one more uh, question. Software architect makes decision, has responsibilities. Uh, have Okay, the question is team members, do they have voice? I mean, can they say something? Uh, yeah the question does the software architect base his decisions on after interviewing the opinions well definitely but that depends on the quality of the architect it depends on how good is the architect if if the architect is good then it, then he will definitely listen to collect all the opinions and only after that will make a final decision but if the architect is bad then he will jump into conclusion quick quickly and and in front of everybody and say like i know what to do hey guys do my way and then he will just not get enough respect and it's not going to affect his position nobody going to fire him for that because again like i said he's not he's not selected by us he's selected by the management and by the top management and that's why we cannot do anything about it so if the architect is is a moron and stupid and doing you know these things like i just explained without talking to us then we will probably quit the project but but the, but this situation is better than no architect. So having no architect is a worse situation comparing to having a bad architect. But answering your question, do people have their voices and can they say something? Definitely, they have to have their voices. They have to, to try to resolve their problems by just communicating to each other without involving the architect. But uh, it's not, it's not going to happen always because sometimes architects are just stupid. Uh, the question is, the next question is, let's say the architect is, again, a, like stupid and, and doing these uh, uh, things uh, voluntarily. I mean, uh, he's a dictator and he's not listening to anybody. So what the software, what the, what the developer has to do in that case? Uh, I think in that case, you just quit. That's the, only, that's the only suggestion I have. Just quit the team, go somewhere else, and don't work with that architect. Before you do that, you can go upstairs you can go to the up management and just complain about that and don't be afraid to do that because you have nothing to lose if you decide that you have a problem with this person 
I am in general, I would suggest to go to go strongly against this situation. So don't try to don't try to correct it somehow and and wait for something. Just go on top and say I don't like the architect. He's doing it wrong. He's managing us. He's making wrong technical decisions. He's not listening to us. Just change the architect. Please do it for us. If the management says I don't care what you say, I just put this person there and you do my way, just quit it. Don't stay in this team. It's not going to you will do yourself just just good favor in, if you if you quit immediately. So don't try to work under a bad architect. As soon as you feel that the architect is not listening to all opinions and, and is making wrong technical decisions too often, then quit the team. If you feel that the architect is too weak and is not strong enough and is not making these decisions uh, in time and is just delaying decisions and just making meetings after meetings, discussing and discussing and not making decisions, it's also a bad architect. Quit the team. Go somewhere else. So you need to work under, this is very important for your personal development to work with the architect who is strong enough and who is capable of making decisions in time and who is listening to you. It's, it's a rare situation, but if you find that architect, you will grow together with this guy and you will grow fast. Uh, the question is, who is rotating people? Who is rotating programmers? Uh, architect or somebody else. Uh, I would say that the management has to do that, to rotate people, to move people from one team to another. That's what we are doing in our teams sometimes, so we don't keep programmers like for a long time. We're trying not to keep programmers for a long time in one project. We're moving them left and right because this is how we guarantee and enforce maintainability. The code is basically better if the people, if quite often people jump in and out and they have to read and understand the code. So that's good. So who is rotating? Definitely not the architect. I think the architect has nothing, should not touch this HR uh, processes and shouldn't, um, shouldn't, uh, he, the architect should be involved in interviewing people probably, selecting people for the future projects, maybe, but maybe not. I don't think that, you know, this, these decisions are important for, for the architect. The architect has to manage the team he has, I think. Of course, the architect may inform the upper management that one of the programmers is keep making mistakes, technical mistakes, too often, and the code being delivered is too low quality. So I would suggest, I would recommend to replace that programmer. But, but this is, should not be critical for the architect, because a good architect configures the project and configures the quality control the way that even the bad programmer will not be able to, 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 uh, to jeopardize uh, the quality of code. So the, even if the bad programmer is in team, still the code base is not going to be ruined tomorrow by that programmer because we have we have control mechanisms to to prevent bad code from getting into master branch, from getting to our repository. So a good architect would configure that, and the bad programmer will be just suffering and not be able to contribute and not be able to earn anything, and and will just the management will just see that before the architect. I mean, that's, that's I think, how it should be. What if the architect needs to make a decision that requires a person very specialized on that topic? Yeah, that's, that's good. So the architect has to, has to consult with the people. Like I just said, it's really important for the architect. The architect should not be the smartest guy in the team, like it usually is. The architect has to be, uh, it's more like the job well he, he definitely has to be one of the smartest but he doesn't he, he's not necessarily the main guy i mean technically the main guy who knows everything he's the guy who is who is able to collect opinions and who is able to say that decision a is better than b and this is my way i said it do it so he has to be strong enough to make decisions and strong enough to take responsibility for them this is way more important than his knowledge of Java or his knowledge of, of some particular library. When I'm an architect, I'm an architect in a few projects of ours where we, we are developing software. Not in all of them. In, in, most, in most cases, I'm not the architect. So where, when I'm the architect, I don't know everything in, in all the pieces of the software. So, but very often I see people making some changes and they're explaining why they're making these changes. And I'm listening to them and then I see the counter opinion. I see that somebody is saying, no, this is wrong. And I don't know which one is right and wrong. So I'm asking questions and these people explaining these things to me. One is arguing to another, they explain, explaining. And at some point of time, I see that, okay, the opinion A is better because of the explanation I just get. And I'm saying, the, the, the way we go is A. 
and who want to be I don't care what you think about that just that's it this is my decision I just made it and I need to be my job I understand it I need to be just strong enough to say it and that's it I may be and I may be wrong I may be wrong maybe I'm making the wrong decisions because you know we make mistakes but it's not so important what's important is to make the decision uh, a few more questions and we are done uh, let's say we have a budget and the, so the question is how the architect is getting the money from the budget uh, is it in general possible to uh, to, to, to so, so the question is how the architect is working with the budget for the project and how uh, the architect is allocating resources I mean uh, asking for resources asking for money software hardware all that stuff I think that the architect has to do that uh, because that's basically because basically the architect is like a developer by by himself and uh, he's responsible for the entire solution so definitely he has definitely he has to uh, to go to the management and, and ask for resources ask for hardware money or time whatever it is and he has to communicate with the project manager because project manager project manager is basically the bureaucrat and uh, the software architect is a, is a technical guy so they need to work together in order to well, basically project manager stays on top of the software architect and and uh, the, the, the architect reports to the project manager so the architect has to explain to the project manager what resources are required but mostly it's the it's the problem of a project manager so the manager is, is responsible for resources for plans for risks for scope for uh, for budget so all these questions are the responsibility of a project manager the project manager will ask the architect what's uh, what what's needed what needs to be what, what do we need for the for the for our work and the architect will provide this information after consulting with programmers but this is not his responsibility to, to work with the budget I think uh, uh, one more question without personal skills it would be dictatorship which reduces motivation uh, definitely definitely uh, if the architect like I understand the question so like I said before a few minutes ago is that I don't think that personal skills are so important for the architect uh, and you're saying that without personal skills people will be demotivated because it's going to be dictatorship um, maybe I did not clearly define what personal skills are I think personal skills here what I meant when I was saying that they are not important I was talking about skills like uh, the ability to make friends the ability to uh, to drink beer <laughs> the ability to uh, to not offend people the ability to I don't know to understand people problems to understand who is in bad mood today who is in a good mood today these skills I think they're not required they only make the work of an architect just just noisy so this is just noise but communication skills are very important so the architect has to be able to communicate in a professional way so the architect when the architects architect says that this is the right solution it shouldn't be this it shouldn't be like this is the solution this is the way to do it do it my way period that's not professional this is not this is lack of communication skills the, the architect has to write it correctly has to explain in in in, a, in proper details the architect has to has to deliver the information in a in a in a readable format so all the necessary details have to be provided the architect doesn't need to, to, to be polite in that way he doesn't need to say please sorry and all this stuff in, 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 in the text too much but he has to be he has to be direct he may be quite you know not harsh but uh, quite direct but the communication need to be rich so all the required information uh, has to be in the in the message so the architect shouldn't be just you know saying like phrases of a few words and just do it do, do it my way and I said it because I'm a dictator in this case it's just a lack of communication skills but the personal skills is something else personal like I, I meant the ability to to be to be a friend which I think is not required for the architect at all and I think two more questions um, uh, let's say we have the question is let's say the management takes takes resources from 
uh, from programmers and then what the architect does. The architect doesn't care about that. The architect doesn't care about plans. The architect doesn't care about timeline. The architect doesn't care about scope, about delivery time, about, uh, about plans, about budget. This is none of the architect concern. The only concern of an architect is the quality of the solution. So the architect, if, if, this, if the product is made in a month or the product is made in a year, but in a month, it's low quality but fast. In a year, it's high quality but slow. So in the first case, when it's fast, the architect is bad. We have to fire him. In the second case, if it's, it, it took a year, it was so long, but the quality is high, the architect is great. Even though the customer said, like, I don't need your product. It's so slow. I'm not going to pay you. It doesn't matter. The architect is great. So the only concern for the architect is quality. How long it takes, how much money you're going to burn for it, it's none of his business. The architect only cares about quality, about technical solution, about how it's done. What libraries do we use? What languages do we use? What's the quality of code? How maintainable it is? That thing, that things, but not the timeline. If it's slow, if it's fast, the architect doesn't care. The architect is focused only about the, the technical things. Nothing about management, I believe. Um, uh, yeah, the question is now it's like a bit funny. So the question is, uh, what if the, uh, no, one more, uh, a software architect is limited by money, by budget, but uh, what should he do if this, the, the uh, how to deal with that? Again, it's no, it, it doesn't really matter what, again, if we don't have the budget, we don't have programmers, we can't move forward. The architect doesn't care because the architect only deals with solutions delivered by the arc, by programmers. So if programmers bring something to the, to the architect and ask questions, what's the right way to do it, then the architect resolves this, answers these questions. But if there are no questions, we don't have the budget, people just quit and we don't have resources, the project is dead, the architect doesn't care. It's not his, it's not his, it's his problem. His problem is just to, to make sure that the code we deliver is high quality. And that's it. So when it's done, how much money it costs, it doesn't really matter. And one last question is probably about my book, The Elegant Objects. You know, I wrote a book, I published it two months ago. It's called Elegant Objects. It's about object-oriented programming. Uh, I highly recommend to take a look. It's, it's on Amazon. Don't forget to write, uh, to write a review there. Uh, so the question is, what if the developer um, read uh, my book but the architect didn't read the book so basically it kind of sounds funny but it makes sense so let's say the developer is more the developer is high has a, you know more skills and knows more about the problem he's solving but the architect doesn't know doesn't know that much so the the the, the level this the level of the architect is lower the level of programmer is higher then it's it's kind of a problem because it's not really good for the programmer the programmer will not respect that architect and it will, will probably quit the team but in general, it's still okay. It's still better than no architect. It's still the programmer will come to the architect and say, you know what, I know this problem better because look, I have just read the book or because look, I'm writing Java code for 10 years and you're just for two years. So I definitely know way more about that. So listen to me. And it, and it will be possible because the architect will not be offended because he knows that his position is, is, is still higher. He's still the architect and this guy is the developer. So he doesn't need to... He doesn't need to fight for, he doesn't need to be jealous and he doesn't need to fight against the programmer. He, he will just learn from the programmer and, and use the skills of that programmer if the architect is, uh, I mean, a reasonable person. So I would, I would suggest uh, being a programmer always to talk to the architect openly and, and, and explain what's wrong and explain what, that I have more knowledge than you, so listen to me. It, it, it will be productive. I think be open with the architect. Uh, So I think that's close to the end. Uh, we are probably run out of questions. I think I answered them all. So let me summarize in one, just in one sentence. So the, the position of an architect is extremely important. A team without an architect is a dead team. I would, I would, I have to emphasize it again and again. A team without an architect is a team which is unproductive. And this is this democracy and this flat organization, this hol uh, holacracy, which is quite popular term, it doesn't work for professional developers. It only, it only embarrasses people in this team. It only turns them off the team. They just want to quit. Professional developers, they need, they want, they appreciate discipline. They appreciate 
rules and standards. This is what professional developers love. I'm a developer myself. I'm just speaking from my own experience as well. So they want to know what are the rules for resolving questions, for answering questions and resolving conflicts. So the position of an architect is exactly the same. It's exactly for that, to say, uh, to show to the team, to demonstrate to everybody that we appreciate discipline and there is a, there is a process, there are rules to resolve questions and conflicts. So thanks for listening. Yeah, see you in, in, a, in uh, Eindhoven. Uh, this uh, Saturday. Thanks for listening. See you next. See you next month, the first Wednesday of a month, 11 a.m. in the morning, Pacific time. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.